car, I've got a great place to stay. I think it might be the best one so far. Lovely big room. There's, a, there's an onsen in the hotel, and I think there's only me staying there. Uh, and uh, the guy provides a free lift out to the monkey park and back. I mean, what a deal, that's fantastic. It was a little trek from the station, must have been all of 10 minutes. Now I'm trying to find somewhere to eat. They've got Wi-Fi, hot water, no kangaroos in the room. I think that's a marvellous bonus. I don't think there's any reason to visit this town, Udanaka, or Udanaka. I think it's Udanaka, because if you say Udanaka, it sounds like you're accusing somebody of being a testicle. Hey, Udanaka, like you the man. Uh, but yeah, there's not much here. It's just a way to get to the monkey place, so. I'm a little concerned, I am. I'm a little concerned about this bear business, this bell bear business. I was just thinking, you know, that film, The Renovant, in which Leonardo Capricorn, he get their bear. Now, great big grizzly, right? 400 pounds, maybe eight foot tall. Do you think that if Leonardo had pulled his bell out and waved it at the bear, the bear would have gone, oh, how scary, and run off? I don't think so. So I don't actually know if I even buy the bear bell business. The bear bell business. Oh, I love a bit of alliteration this time of the night. And I could just imagine, suppose there was just one really clever bear, suppose a yogi bear. I mean, yo, yogi, sounds Japanese. Yogi bear is quite who's smarter than the average bear, boo boo. Suppose he got a load of his bear pals together. They all got together one evening and had a kebab, uh, a kind of, you know, a cookout with probably rabbit, no, no salad. And Yogi said, look, I've got an idea. You know this bear bell business? And the bears go, yeah. And Yogi says, well, why don't we wait where there aren't the bells? Then we can jump out and eat the humans. And just as some of the bears are turning this revolutionary idea over in their head, a couple of other bears put a spanner in the works. Paddington says, I think we should put it to a committee. And while the other bears are trying to work out what committee means, Rupert Bear pipes up. Here he is in his red top and his little check trousers and he says, I don't think we should eat people and I think we should make friends with frogs. Diddly um boom boom, like that. Which thoroughly confuses the bears and they don't do it. And that, I suspect, is the only reason there aren't more bear attacks between Magome and Sumagol. This is the end of my bear theory. Trello! I'm feeling like a, an authentic pretend traveller now because look, I've got my kimono. Kimono. What a place, I can't get over it. Uh, it's just, it's, I think it's my favourite place so far. Best value for money. And it's called, um, that's what it's called. Ha! It's very early in the morning. This little hotel has its own. Titchy little onsen. There we are. <laughs> smile, smile, smile. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, for the steak. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, there goes the bed. I hope he's going to come back and get me. Okay, so here we go. Into the famous Jigokudanai, oh, Jigokudanai, Yayan Kun entrance of the Monkey Park. <laughs> We're off to see some of your relatives and mine. Non ship shoes, non slip shoes are necessary to prevent falls on an loy trail. So we've got a little 1.6 kilometre trek up to the monkeys. I hope they're all at home today. It might be a bit crisp up here because we're up in the mountains. And it's definitely on the cool side. And I'm wearing trousers too. My very favourite ones with fish. Fish all over them. If you've got any like this you don't like, write in, I'll buy them off you. Are we really different? Well, I am. 
Yes, don't be concerned. I'm not going to start rapping or going yo. I'm just a bit cold. Well, that's really good because we're in the middle of May, so there should be some little babies. Oh, little cute babies. Little cute Japanese red-faced baboon monkey babies. No babies. That's... I, oh! <laughs> <laughs> These snow monkeys, you know, I've seen them on the telly a lot. They're on Aunt Attenborough programs. He goes, and here in Japan, in the water, are monkeys that live here in the water. But so they're like film stars, really. So uh, it's kind of a little bit excited, a little bit excited. Uh, it's it's going to be like, oh, I don't know, it's going to be like having Al Pacino and, and Clint Eastwood and Robert De Niro and Leonard Capriccio. All, all in one big bath, naked. And also grooming each other. Grooming each other and picking off flecks of dead skin and hair and maybe bursting your monkey abscess. Just like film stars. The smell of um, sulphur is pervading of my nostrils. So I think we're getting closer to their Onsen, Johnson. <laughs> Do not feed monkeys. Please refrain from littering around our house and please do not go to the toilet around our house. That lovely rainbow in the spray. Right there, we have a little. Uh...
So there we are, the snow cooled, snow cooled, <laughs> dopey twit. So there we are, the so called snow monkey park. Now, obviously, the best time to come is when the snow's on the ground because then the poor little so and so's are all very, very cold and they go in the onsen. But the chap was telling me in his English that uh, they don't go in the onsen when the weather's warm. So, day like today, lovely spring day, it's bright. Would you do it? Would you go in the hot swimming pool on a sunny day? No. So if you're in Japan in the winter, you know, December, that's a good time to see them all. Then you can watch them all suffering. Next time you see them on the telly and it shows them in the snow, look at how happy they don't look. It's still worth a visit though, and it was a really good time to be here because there were a few babies about, which as you saw, provided a lot of the entertainment. <laughs> Look, it's John Bush from Japan. Thank you very much.